Welcome to Martinis with Eddie. Tonight I'm joined by Ryan Bailey, host of So Bad is Good with Ryan Bailey, and the runner up for the sexiest man alive. A, oh. title, <laughs> a guy named, I think it's Chris Evans, I think is the guy. Yeah, Chris, Chris Evans unfortunately won sexiest man of the. I feel like if they went with podcasters, I would have been in the top 10 at least. Right now, you can't tell though, because I haven't gotten much sleep. But Chris Evans, congratulations to you, buddy. I know you needed this, so congratulations. I mean, uh, what else he has going on with his life anyways? That's it, really. The, he needs this more. At least we have things to do with our lives. We don't need to be Chris Evans. And he's, I'm happy for this because one day he'll be old and ugly, hopefully, right? <laughs> yes. uh, I mean, I hope so, too. So, Ryan, uh, tell me, how do you feel about talking about Beverly Hills? I, I, listen, I, I have to say, I feel bad because I, I think I... I was so ready for it to be over, and now that it's over, I hate to say that I think, I think I might miss it a little bit, and that feels I I, I feel bad about feeling that because I wanted it to be over so bad, and now I'm kind of like, like Winter House is so fun to watch, but Beverly Hills, like at, usually on Friday, I'm so angry from watching Beverly Hills on Wednesday still, to ha like, and I don't have an outlet for that anger anymore, so I'm kind of I kind of miss it. I mean, how do you, you feel? Like I mean, I honestly, I have been telling people I need to send Andy some uh, checks, like asking him for checks because I've been going to therapy because of Beverly Hills. <laughs> so he needs to pay for my PTSD therapy. That was a hard <laughs> season to watch. It was, it was a hard season on top of another hard season last season. And I talked to Crystal uh, Minkoff this week on, on my pod. And at the same time, it's I think us, I think the viewers, we take it we take it almost more serious seriously than some of the the cast members do cuz she was like yeah i would get i can get into the room with those ladies i've unfollowed no one on social media i i could do that again and i'm like how could you ever get into a room with lisa rin again how could you ever i mean we get more upset and into these things than they like they love to do it but at the same time i mean i think rin is the one that stays there i think rin stays ready all the time yeah if that makes sense i mean you see her even after the show is over still talking about it like i get it you're still mad about the whole tequila mismatch in aspen with kathy hilton but the season is over i want to move on but it's hard to move on because like you said like there is this sentiment that i'm happy that it's over but i kind of want to still be mad at it like I well i i think i think it what, what happened is that there was a lot of storylines that were really not wrapped up or that we we ended up focusing at the very end on a storyline that we didn't have any footage out over so it's not like i i want those ladies to still be going at each other i just think what they chose to end the season on with no footage and that was like the big thing remember like the week before that happened you had erica jane going on there going like i don't care about no one but me and like and we forgot all about that like i mean we actually had real things happen like we never got to see erica jane date somebody and she said she was getting dick all the time how do we not see that like I that's want the kind of stuff i want to see i want to know whose dick is dicking down erica jane that's what i'm curious yeah. about i don't care well, about I, I don't even care i don't even you can blur out the guy's face but i want to see a shadowy figure roll up on that pool house or or do a walk of shame the next day because right. other than that i just think she's like making it up i don't think she's getting nearly the amount of sex she says she's getting and that's i don't i don't even know if i care about gerardi keese anymore i want to know the investigation of who erica is banging because she says even at the reunion she said I'm doing good, Andy. I just had sex last night. And it was like, like first off, gross. Second <laughs> off, like, like, I'm so, like, you don't need to tell everybody your business all the time, you know? That's right. It was like in BravoCon too. Like, everything she talked about is like how much dick she got. I'm like, for somebody who is very sexually open, talking about it all the time, it's very questionable. Like, how are well, you getting all this dick? Eddie, I could be, I mean, listen, I'm a virgin myself. So maybe if I, had, if I ever get sex, I would want to talk about it all the time. Maybe it's just that good. Like maybe she's just so excited and, and she just wants to tell everybody. But I also think there's something that's really cool and potentially sexier if you keep your mouth quiet about it, you know, like what, let the audience fill in the blanks for you. Like we know, like, but Erica telling us all the time, she always dresses sexy, but there's nothing sexy about her to me personally you know true 
Very true. Honestly, like when people, uh, I remember when she came on the show, I mean, she obviously had all the money to be pretty. She had the 40,000, 40, whatever, glam squad following her around. Uh, like, I still didn't see her as like this sexy bomb show that people made it to be. It was just, to me, it was like one of those girls that's like normal looking, just dressed up with like expensive Yeah, clothes. she's she's a dress up Barbie that actually were, was making her dreams come true through the money of somebody else. And that's fine. Like, that's like, listen, this is America. A lot of women uh, do that. A lot of dudes do that. Like, right. I mean, we, we have, yeah, but I, I just feel like there was, the emperor has no clothes. At the end of the day, I, I never, I thought she has a couple bops that she didn't even write herself. You know, it was like, she was never going to be Lady Gaga. So why are we, you know, who's out there going like, I hope, I hope uh, Erica does a stadium tour again. Like, you know, <laughs> like, like, I hope, like, there's just, what, are, what, are, I just want to know what, what is the future hold? And I guess we'll find out, but at a certain point, she's going to be like Gina and the Casita at OC. Yeah. You know, that's what she's heading to. I mean, she keeps complaining about her house in Beverly Hills. But that is oh, it's big. still big. By the way, it's still bigger than any house I'll ever live in. That's I right. it, it, it's still a really I call it a pool house, but it's really nice. It's like still really a nice house. I mean, it's not it's not Pasadena Mansion, but it's still better than most people's home. And she still complain about it like it's Gina's Casita because that's the other Gina's Casita is like a whole different level. Like that's like <laughs> <laughs> well, well. By the way, we an, an applause to Gina because she moved out of the Casita and then she got like a townhouse. But it's still a townhouse. And then when you're going over to Heather DeBro's mansion where they're throwing out thirty thousand dollars worth of sushi in a night, and you have to go home to your townhouse. Which, by the way, if I had a townhouse, I'd be thinking my lucky stars every day. But compared to those other ladies, it's like it, it, it's like. There's no way to compete. You no, like Gina, Gina will never like, and Gina doesn't have like a skinny girl margarita in her. Like she doesn't, there's not like Gina's on the press. Like I love Gina, but it's not like Gina's on the precipice. Like Bethany Frankel was like, That's Gina right. will make a very nice living, hopefully through housewives, but she's never going to be a multi, 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 multi millionaire. If that makes sense. Yeah. She's not going to be Heather or Kyle Richards or, so, no, yeah. I mean, unless unless that guy that she's with is in real estate. I didn't. Uh, did you watch that agency uh, reality show on Netflix? Yeah, I watched the first episode. I didn't realize it was such a dynasty with the family. I didn't realize. Yeah. I didn't realize the two daughters were like fully involved. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, Farah. I, I mean, I've been following the, the the story about the whole buying Beverly Hills because I do real estate too on the side. Um, with, of course, but, you yeah. do. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm trying to do something. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to build my, I'm trying to build my thing yeah, here in the north in, in, in New York. But um, but yeah, like, I've been following the whole storyline, and, and yes, Farah and and, and Alex, Alexia, yeah, they're both really into the whole real estate, and they are becoming household names in within the agency. But it is dynasty vibes, and I, I'm still wondering how Rick Hilton feels about all this stuff because, as we know, I mean, there's like a bad lot between them because of real well, estate. But see, that's what I think. I, I wish uh, Beverly Hills viewers and like, like, you know, the Uber, you know, the people like us where we know all the backgrounds and stories. And there's a lot of really passionate fans that realize that Mauricio kind of not screwed over, but was with Hilton and Highland Real Estate, which is Rick Hilton, and left to form his own thing. Now, that is such an intense storyline that they really kind of dance over. But I feel like, you know, that's where podcasts and YouTube series and all, that's where, like, you can really fill in the gaps because it explains why the Kathy and Kyle relationship is even more strained. So when they do get into a fight in Aspen, this is decades of things that involve their husbands, their businesses. It's not just sister to sister, which is already intense. You're dealing with business relationships worth millions of dollars. And we're acting like that just didn't happen on the show. Yeah, and that's what I keep telling people. I'm like, this situation in Aspen was not just tequila vibes. This is like decades, decades yeah. of uh, Richard versus Hilton situation that we, I mean, the most people don't know. People who follow the, the show might not know because they don't talk about it on the show. But if you have followed their life outside the show, you know that there is real drama between the families for decades. Well, that's why I always think the, the show behind... Reality shows in general have to be careful in the future because they really have to make sure that they um, show the reality because the reality 
behind the reality is so much more exciting and juicy than sometimes the reality we see on the TV. I know that's a little bit of an inception comment, but think about it. Like, wouldn't you love to get the inner workings of the conversation about Mauricio and Rick? Like, wouldn't you love to see them in the same room talking about that situation? Like, that's real drama to me, but they're going to focus on things like a sprinter van ride that, I mean, like, I, who who the F knows, but we do know that Mauricio did leave Rick's real estate firm and start his own, and now it is very, very successful. It is the number one agency. Rick Hilton doesn't have a TV deal with Netflix. You know, like, I, he doesn't even come on Beverly Hills. So that, to me, explains everything that you need to know why Kathy, when she gets upset, why she gets upset when Kyle gets scared of Kathy, why she gets scared of Kathy. Like the answers are all there. I just feel like sometimes the show uh, just makes kind of just doesn't talk about it and pleads like ignorance. Like, oh, I don't know why this is so intense for these sisters, you know? And how do you feel about Kathy saying that she wants to leave the show if the cast stay the same? Like, will you recast or will you just like ignore the oh, whole situation? Listen, Kathy got this many people rumbling and she's a friend of. She's not a full-time housewife. I mean, listen, the ratings were the highest that they've been. Um, I'm personally over Rinna. But I'm not. I'm not one of those people that like go. This person needs to be fired. This person needs to be fired. Like I don't like whoever you want to bring back. Bring back. I'm gonna watch it. But for entertainment's sake, if Rena comes back, she needs to. Cool she needs to actually be. She needs to be. No, she needs to be real. Like yeah. she's acting. Like I keep saying, she's a characterization of a characterization of a characterization. And now it just feels like a complete phony person. Kathy, I think will. Not come back at first, but then I think Kathy actually genuinely loves that she's loved so much. I think everybody, it doesn't fall into that trap, but I think she loves being loved. So I think she'll turn it down at first, and then I think she'll come back at some point. Um, and the weird thing I'm hearing now, I hear Diana wants to come back. And I thought there was no way in hell that Diana Jenkins would want to come back. But I'm hearing she wants to come back. She just wasn't prepared for the intensity of the fan reactions. I, I agree. I I keep saying this to people, like I'm not a Diana Jenkins fan. I still don't even know why she was even on the show in the first place. Diana, Diana if, your if your lawyers are watching, Diana, I'm a big fan of you guys. Please leave me alone. <laughs> this is all alleged, Diana, please. This is, uh, there's no season decision necessary here. But what I'm saying is like, I wish she came on the show with the mentality of getting to know the ladies instead of having an agenda that it, I mean, it was too obvious that she was fed by the likes of Rena and especially Rena, you know, I feel like, yeah. So, so that took away the fact that I did not want to get to know her because I, I want people who come on the show with the attitude of like, you know what? I want you to know me for who I am. I want to be friend with who wants to be my friend instead of, Instead of just like, okay, I'm just going to be your enemy because somebody told me you you are having an issue with this person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if you move that part, I'm fine with her coming back. Yeah, I, I mean, I listen, I I enjoyed watching Asher more than I did watching Diana. You know, I, was like, I, I was like, wow, Asher, like I liked his little Christmas songs. I liked his, you know, I just thought there, with Diana, how do you have a line like, you know, like, uh, you want the villain? Here I am, and then not then then just disappear. Like it's like you, you, like you can't say a line like that and then actually be just a really weak cast member. That uh, I mean, I just couldn't get a sense of what, and it felt like they were editing her out once the cease and desist started flying. I think it just seems like by the end she just disappeared. Like I, I mean, she and also with these like, there's got to be rules in these shows. Listen, I appreciate that Diana likes to like have Ghostbusters come to hotels and like get them all. Like, I love that. Like, I think that's quirky and fun. But wouldn't it even be more fun to see Diana have to stay at Kyle's Aspen place? Wouldn't yeah. it be more fun to like, you know, like you don't have the choice to stay at a hotel. You're going to stay at Kyle's. I would rather see Diana Jenkins try to fit in at Kyle's. Be I mean, it's a beautiful Aspen place. But the fact that she can't makes me want to see her do it. You know, like I feel like they shouldn't have the opportunities and the 
options like that. Like you should have to go, like you shouldn't be able to not, you, you shouldn't be able to not go on a cast trip either. You have to go. I agree. And also the fact that, I mean, remember when she was on that van with a crystal, she said like, what is an outlet? And all those like little moments, like they are like completely, like, I don't even know how this person doesn't even know this type of stuff. It makes me wonder, like, I want this fun, like, stupid kind of commentary on the show because that's what I watch uh, Housewife. I want yeah. the, the really rich nonsense that we don't see on the, our average days. And she has that. She's, she, she's worth No, she know? has that. I mean, it's, it's, but it is funny, though. They have to... I mean, this is not the... Uh, I was... An episode of the Kardashians last season, Kylie Jenner and her mom, Kris Jenner, went out for gro- to grocery shop and went to the gas station and they, they had the best time pumping gas. They're like, hee, 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 this is so funny. He look at how you put the nozzle in the thing. And it's like, I love when rich people think it's really cute to do the shit we have to do every day. Like they were at a grocery store going like, oh, you just give the food to the checkout per Like, come on. Like, they, <laughs> I love when they think it's like, it's really cute. The things that we actually like trudge through our lives and have to do, but they're like, it's so fun to get gas with you, mom. Like that's Kylie goes, it's so fun to be here at the gas station with you. And I was like, it's no, nobody <laughs> should think it's fun to be at a gas station. It's not fun. Like the only rich people think that kind of crap's fun, but I do enjoy, like, wouldn't it be fun to make Diana guess like how much a gallon of milk costs or something? <laughs> she wouldn't know. No, and now that you mentioned the whole gas pumping. Um, I grew up in Jersey, so we don't pump our own gas. And then I moved up here to upstate New York with my husband uh, last year. So I had to learn how to pump the gas. And the first time I'm looking like, so why do I do? Uh, where do I go? <laughs> so like those moments, now that you mentioned the whole like people not knowing what to do about yeah. like, you know, everyday situation, that's what I think about. So <laughs> it's funny. And that, and that makes great TV. Like that's what I'm missing on, on Housewives, especially Beverly Hills, because we kind of miss that nonsense with the whole dark situation but see i feel like then salt lake actually which is shout out to lisa barlow i've got my big thirst buster here uh i feel like that they're not all like nearly as rich as the beverly hills ladies but there's a lot of nonsense there like if you you're going into like like heather gay forming a choir and only like 12 people are auditioning to and then and then lisa barlow's like Oh, when a manger, no, like, and rearranges the song. And I was like, this to me is classic housewives. I was like, I, I enjoyed watching that so much. And Salt Lake is still drama filled, but at the same time, it's not nearly as, uh, toxic as Beverly Hills is. I agree. And like you said, uh, talking about the choir, you're a Broadway guy too. Right. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I grew up. I mean, I, I mean, I'm a trained theater actor, which is why it's so sad that I do what I do now. But like that, there is. That's why I, I. Do you know the guy that runs Heather Gay? Somebody just sent it to me today. The guy that runs Heather Gay's choir has his own podcast. Yes, has his own podcast. Yeah, I was like, oh my god. Yeah, I actually reached out to them because there's two of them, and I like, let, let's have a kick. Let's talk about it on my podcast. Like, yeah, sure, whatever. But I think it's hysterical that you mentioned there was only like five people in line to to the audition, and it's that's actually- not a choir by that's that's barely a boy band. Like that's not even a choir. You have to have like twenty or thirty people. Like period. I, I, there's no choir. Like and also, couldn't you have just if they had put that out on Twitter? If Heather Gay said, "Hey guys, having show choir auditions in Utah," you like wouldn't it have been so much more fun to see hundreds of people audition? Yeah, like there were there were more people in the judging room judging than there were auditioning. So I imagine that everybody made it. And like now that you mentioned, like you know, imagine having a whole line of people waiting. Do you remember trying the insult comedy? Yeah, of color? course. Yes, of course. Yeah. Can you imagine inviting him to roast all these people in line? That would be magic TV right there. Well, that's, but I see, that's what I love when people take funny events, but they treat them seriously. Like, I love that Lisa Barlow sang her little heart out. I love that she was like, I love that she didn't treat it like a joke. I love that even though Heather Gay and her are in a bat, she's like, I'm still going to show up to this audition. And I'm still going to kill it. And I'm still going to. And I just, I think that's where when you can actually get into the neuroses of these ladies, it becomes really, um, 
it's like you know it, it's it's funny for me to watch but also for them it's so serious and that's why it's funny for me but like a lot of people will watch housewives and they watch it just as a straight show like they're like good it's choir auditions this is very serious like there's two different types of uh bravo viewers if yeah. you if you notice you know yeah i totally agree i mean it, it it definitely brings like I guess like old school housewife like all that quirky nonsense that we don't get to watch in all the shows like Salt Lake City to me it's like a fever dream every episode is a yeah. fever dream it, it, it so many twists so many twists and turns that you don't expect and they don't really add up either like you can't trace it as like a line like it just zigzags all around and you're like are you wait did Whitney just say she was abused when she was younger and now they're going to Arizona and they're doing and they're pouring like liquor like like who turned upside down and then like Whitney just poured a bottle of like <laughs> on, on, on her private parts and I was like this is crazy like this is and then they go to like a really nice mansion but it's like decorated like it's from the 80s and it was like I just all those little things I think are so magical and I think it's because I have to repeat watch these things for my show so you pick up on more and more of the bizarreness when you watch it multiple times i agree 100 percent. and like talking about that trip when they went to uh to uh what's the arizona they went to uh, scottsdale yes uh, i remember when when that was the first time the the heather pushed with me and now in this in this episode heather didn't even put like heather by the way can man manhandle with anyone he heather yeah. like heather has a career in wrestling like she was like she's like it was it looked like it was nothing like a feather she just like boom right into the wall and and, and in this episode she's like okay with it you have to go she literally lived with me up <laughs> And moves it. I'm like, girl, you you strong. I'm like, I'd be so scared to face Heather Gay like in a dark alley. Heather, no, I gotta say, Heather is like one. Like Heather still, Heather still is one of my favorites in some ways. But at the same time, it's interesting when you're three seasons into something, and this is where you can see where, where like fan reaction has either uh, you buy into it or you kind of keep like. And I feel like Heather might be buying her own bullshit a little bit too much of like. I don't know. She's, I feel like she's, she's still very genuine, but at the same time, I still will never understand the, the sticking by so intensely of Jen Shaw, yet she will get mad at people and family members like Whitney, where I, I, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it's also just in the manner of how Whitney comes off as weak. She's like, I am weak. My name's Whitney, but she's actually like you, you we're watching somebody get their strength. But Jen Shaw will scream at the top of the buildings how she's innocent and how amazing she is. And I feel like she gets stuck up. Like, Heather treats her better than she treats Whitney. And I'm like, Jen Shaw defrauded the... Elder. Like, I she... Listen, I saw her at BravoCon, Jen Shaw. She was partying her nuts off. She was like, she looks like she's a good time. Like, she does look fun, but that doesn't take away from the fact that she's a criminal. And the fact that we're going to then treat Whitney... In a in a lesser way than you would actually like. Why not? Why not stand behind Whitney as as hard as you're standing behind Jen Shaw? If to me it's a huge character flaw uh, for for Heather, in my opinion. Yeah. A lot of people might disagree. No, I agree a hundred percent. Like uh, like you mentioned, like we we saw Jen Shaw at that party dancing her the night away. And yes. And I, I I appreciate it, but like we can't take away the fact that she's still you know in a criminal charge and she's gonna probably allegedly go to jail and all this stuff but and on the other side you have ngh who has a husband who made a whole account on instagram shock exposed shock exposed <laughs> and, and, and still heather take uh, take her side he's a good he's a good guy he's a good i mean like listen He's a 52 year old dude. And like, I, I have no room to speak. Like I'm on Instagram making stupid memes all day, but I do it with my name. Like I do it with my, like I'm not hiding behind any account. Like I wish now I was like, do you ever wish that you were like, 
like I'm, I'm three years into this and now I wish like maybe I should have been like a Dumois or a Bravo, Bravo ducking Bravo where I hide my face. Like I, I like, sometimes I'm like, man, I put my name right out there. Like there's no way if this doesn't work out for me that anybody will ever hire me at a normal job ever again. Like if you just do a basic Google search on me, I'm screwed. Like I'm like, Oh, this guy just makes silly memes about, uh, reality shows. Like that's, he has a, he has a weird podcast where he really gets angry a lot. Um, but yeah, like it's weird. Like I understand standing up for your wife. I don't understand creating a completely fake account and then attacking people. And listen, you don't want to give Jen Shaw ammunition because Jen Shaw wants to find people like him that will prove her point of look at me. I'm being picked on for no reason. And in this case, you know, like he named it Shaw Exposed and he wasn't even going after Jen Shaw. He was going after Lisa Barlow. Which made absolutely no sense. I do try to understand what was well even what was the end goal of creating this troll account. Because like if you're gonna be if you're gonna be a troll, have a goal with the trolling. This guy just literally made a, an account to go after Lisa Barlow and he only even posts once and now he talks about it on the show like he he he's like this big troll on the But do you even remember like I don't even remember like I'm I'm pretty heavily online. I don't remember this account at all. At there's all. a there's a couple other Shaw ones that I uh, I that actually I don't know if I follow. There was I'm trying to but they would post like Jen Shaw arguing with her assistants and I'm like these people are really going after Jen Shaw. I don't remember Shaw exposed at all. And that's when it gets kind of weird for me cuz I'm like I usually am like I'll I'm pretty up on things in terms of Bravo. So I'm like, how did I just not even hear about this at all? Like, how was this, this, like, I would, ha have you talked to anybody that remembers this account? Not at all. The yeah, first I feel like heard about it was the show. And I was thinking like, did they literally just create it? So, uh, NGH has a storyline and to somehow get a snowflake, which girl is the third time that you have tried and you still are not a, a snowflake holder. You barely a friend of who made yeah. it because somebody created a troll account to troll Lisa Barlow. It's like, but you can tell, I mean, like I, I see that's another way. Like I enjoy the show. I enjoy it because you can see how much she wants to be on it. And in that way, it makes it funnier because then she's, I think there's something innately funny when somebody tries too hard, when somebody's like, yeah, yeah. Like, or like even her dan dressing up with Whitney for the choir auditions. And like, would you show, if you literally, if your husband got caught making a troll account, would you ever show your face around those ladies again? I would be so embarrassed in real life. If that, if I, like somebody I was involved with got caught, I would not be able to stop apologizing. She shows up and acts like it's no big deal. And that he's a good, like that part to me is so funny to watch. Cause I'm like, and also it just, that's why it's like funny. Jen Shaw going on this show, like last year when she c came on, even after the charges, I said, well, that's a huge mistake because why would you want to give any of these people evidence against you and why we, and then she ended up looking great because all the rest of the people on Salt Lake are insane. Like that Jen Shaw actually ends up looking good because Jen Shaw like is pretty much fun. Like she's like, let's have fun, everybody. When it, I mean, that's, you see how charming she is, but you also see like, do I want to see Meredith put her toe up uh, her husband's taint in a bathtub? Like, no, like I don't like Seth, like that bathtub scene is creepier than Tamara and Eddie from OC. Like that, we don't need to see stuff like that. I, and by the way, please do not watch this show with your kids. Cause you would have to explain why a man and woman are in a bathtub. And he says, please don't put your toe in my taint. And I then know. laughs about it. it it's honestly, I'm like tired of Bravo doing this because it's not the first time we have, we have Tamara and Eddie, we have Teresa and, and, and what's his name? Uh, uh, Joe. Oh, Judas. Yeah. That was another one. I was like, please stop making uh top scenes. They're not sexy. They're creepy. They're cringy. I don't want to watch that. Well, no, I always, I always say to people like, just, I said this yesterday at some point, I was like, think, I mean, think about those poor camera men and women that have to do that. Like, do they, like, I just, I'm shocked that they can even hold the camera still because I would either be laughing or throwing up and it would be shaky. Like I would just shake the camera because I would get so nervous. Like it's so uncomfortable. And 
the fact that they're sitting there with smiles on their faces make it even like what is it with Meredith Mark and baths? Like she loves to be filmed in a bathtub. <laughs> Remember the last season was when yes. uh, Mary walked into her. Yes, in the it was like, at the, the the vacation house, and she was like, "Hi," no. and it was so weird. And Mary's like, "What the hell?" And, oh, by the way, this is my new idea. What? Is, okay, so if Jen Shaw can't be at the reunion legally, like, so Andy said at BravoCon that Jen Shaw like he would like to do an interview with her one on one, but he made it sound like she wasn't going to be at the reunion. So that means you got four cast members then. What if we bring back Mary Cosby just for the reunion? We don't, like, we just let her watch the season and she just gets to comment on it. Like, wouldn't you love to hear Mary Cosby's thoughts of, like, make her watch this entire season without her and then just come in for the reunion and talk about the other ladies? I think it would be amazing. Can you imagine if they pull, like, something like they did with Potomac with, um, a Nicki Minaj, and instead of Nicki, they bring Mary, and it's and she just yeah. brings everybody else to I will, and, that would be like and, the best. And the Salt Lake City, uh, City girls are expecting somebody famous, and it's Mary Cosby, you know? <laughs> like, oh no, I mean, I miss it. I think Salt Lake, I, it's weird because Salt Lake and the ratings isn't doing as good as I think oh, it well. deserves to do. And I know most people don't really care about ratings they're watching, but I, I care because I care about the overall health of Bravo and the network. But I'm like, I think this this should be getting way bigger ratings than it's getting. Like, I think it's still, like, I understand that it's, like, not cohesive in the sense of some storytelling, but I think it's still so bizarre and weird that I find it, like, how is this not a bigger show? That's right. It's like, uh, I don't know, do you watch any episode that are your girlfriends in Paris by any chance? Yes, I did. I actually, uh, I have uh, Asia, uh, Aja actually coming on So Bad It's Good next week from Real Girlfriends in Paris. Because my thing was like, listen, let's not have it be, you know, as Bravo fans, don't, ha let's not get into a situation of another Gallery Girls or NYC Prep where they're one season wonders and then 15 years later, we're still bitching that they didn't have a second season. I feel like with Bravo, you need to have two seasons guaranteed of every show and two seasons for every cast member, even the ones you don't like on one. Like, I feel like you're never going to learn about these people in one season. But Real Girlfriends in Paris, I ended up the I ended up digging it in the end. Yes. I, I'm glad I watched. I mean, it, it it's only 10 episodes. You guys, you can watch it on streaming, but I ended up enjoying it. Yeah, it's like a like old school reality, reality TV. It's not heavily charged in drama. It's actually people just living their life. That's the whole point of the show. It's yeah. people living their life, you know? Yeah. And they're young. They're having a good time in, in Paris. What's not to love about Paris? Yeah, they may. And by the way, the, whoever shoots it makes it, Paris look so romantic and beautiful. So you have that on top of these kind of wealthier 24-year-old women, which is also kind of funny because they're struggling to like try to earn their own living and not like, you know, take their dad's money. They're, you know, there's like a lot of interesting things that I feel like it creates a good universe. But we also have to be careful, I believe, because Bravo, not it's not their fault, but there's too many court cases now. Like, so like... Listen, if you're coming off a season where Erica Jane and her husband, her husband's been accused of, you know, like like the California bar is going down because of Tom Girardi. You go from that and then you go to uh, Salt Lake with Jen Shaw. Like these things are amping the audiences up where eventually they're going to expect a murder. And if we just do a basic reality series... People are so amped for that courtroom drama that they don't realize like, well, there's some real just good interpersonal stuff between these women. And that's why we love these shows in the first place. place. We're supposedly these relationships with these women, not the fact that the courts were getting involved. Like everything has gotten so huge. I agree. And that's what I, I hated when I saw the, 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 um, the ratings for, Real girlfriends in Paris. I'm like, why are people missing out on this show? This is the perfect like show to escape from all the heaviness of how yes. is happening right now. You know. Well, that that's why I also like it's very interesting in programming is that you need those shows that are. I'm actually really digging Winter House this season because so it's a it, so it, it's it's a it's so dumb, but it's so it's a breath of fresh air. 
that is like, you know, after the intensity of Beverly Hills, and that's why, like, it, it, the first couple of weeks that Salt Lake was on, it was it was directly after Beverly Hills, and it was a really intense two-hour night of TV because you're, like, going from, like, this Sprinter Van conversation and you're switching over and Whitney might have been abused when she was, and you're just, like, your head's spinning. But if you go to Winter House, it is wall-to-wall stupidity. And, and I, I got to say, like, I'm here, I like, I mean, guys, like literally that crypto Lin- Lin- Lindsay girl, like that looks like Lindsay hooks up with the one dude that wears pearl necklaces. And I, I'm not going to be foul here, but literally talks about their sex in a way. And I'm like, this is insane. And then they'll have a scene where they're just doing a contest about hammering nails into a piece of wood. It is the dumbest show, but I watch it with a huge smile. On my face. I'm like, I, I love it. I'm like Sandoval's bringing out glow sticks. And I'm like, for some reason, I don't expect anything out of that show. And I end up enjoying it so much. I agree. I was watching last night's episode. You mentioned that I was laughing how she's like, oh, uh, I like I want you inside. And I'm like, I yeah, I want you inside want, me. I want you inside like, me. Right. Like, the only time that I say that I'm a married man, so my sex life <laughs> is kind of boring. I don't say this, they, all these like moments don't happen anymore. The only time that I say that is when I'm eating my pizza. I just want you inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, I say that to the sad Taco Bell bag uh, beside me at 2 a.m. Yeah. No, I mean, but like that. that that's what I love is that they kind of push the boundaries in terms of like. This like, you know, like Meredith Marks and Seth in a bathtub, whatever. But these people are like, literally the guy's like, will you like, she, you know, uh, it's that time of the month for her. And she's like, will, will you go down on me? And she's like, okay, I will. Like they're having these conversations where I'm like, holy crap. Like this is, I mean, not pushing boundaries. It's not unique, but it just shows you we're in a whole this ain't Kansas anymore. This is like, we're dealing with like early thirties, mid thirties people that are still getting drunk every weekend and trying to get laid in one house. And I think it's like, it's kind of brilliant, even though it's so dumb. It's so dumb. It reminds me of like college years. Like when I, when I see them playing beer pong, doing like keg stands. Yeah. They're they're just doing contests, drinking and crazy. Craig's like giving Craig's like a pillow king, so he's like paying for he's paying Kyle and Amanda to have the good room. He's like, I won't, I won't clean up. I don't. I, that's why I make money so I can pay people to do it. Like those lines, like showing your ass like that, and also being able to see Austin try to do an apology tour after he like la- wreckage on uh, a Summer House is fascinating. Uh, yeah, I mean, thank I, you, Frenchy mom. Yeah, oh, well, thank I'll you, Gene. Yeah, thank you so much for commenting. Hey, and honestly, like, like to me, the show that I enjoyed the most on Bravo, I mean, I love The Housewives. I came into the Bravo world because of Housewives. But if you ask me, Winter House is, is taking me back to those days. Uh, Summer House, uh, uh, <laughs> what we call the other one, uh, with, uh, The Southern Charm. And yeah. And the one rules. I mean, that's, my, that's like my, this is my go-to, like, guilty pleasure. But I also have to, it, it's so funny because I feel like Southern Charm and Summer House, or Winter House and Summer House really amplify, you would think Real Housewives would do this, but it amplifies the differences between men and women so, so much. And like you really see that the women are so much more thought out, emotional, uh, um, not emotional in a bad way, but like thought out and emotional in a great way. Whereas guys just want to get like, have people touch their dick and, and nail like hammers into wood. Like that's all they want. That's all they want. And that like the one guy, Corey's just like, I like to see your boobs. I like your, <laughs> your boobs. And like the girl lifts up her shirt and he's like, your boobs look good. And like, that's, it's like <laughs> that, it, but that's all got that guys. And this guy thinks he's like, uh, playing the game. Like if you act like you don't like them, they, they like, and by the way, I'm pissed because it seems like it, it works for this dude, but it just shows you how ridiculous. Cause then the girls are up there and Paige. we finally have Paige breaking down going, dude, this is making me look bad. Uh, Cause I'm a couple with you and you're, you're like so hot headed that like, and it's just funny. It shows you how, uh, karma pays off. Like she had everything to say about Kyle and Amanda's relationship. And now she's in a similar relationship. And I, I mean, like, listen, I, I think they're probably going to get married. I think, I think they both equally like each other and the attention that they get for being with each other. But it's funny to watch Paige because Paige is very not calculated, but she doesn't get herself into the trouble that Craig gets himself into. That's right. 
That's right. And Paige seems to be like one of those girls who who just wants to like be super laid back in a relationship, like not be like mega. She dramatic. wants to be like the bratty girl, the valid yeah. girl, the girl that's like I'm the cool girl. She wants to be that. So the fact that she then gets thrown into like, oh my dude's the one that's starting the most drama in the house. Like she wants to be laying in the bed. Like Paige does her best work horizontal, and I don't mean sex. I mean, she just likes to lay in bed and talk shit. Like, the fact that she has to actually stand up and stand up for Craig, like, that is wild. She just wants to lay there. She, like, her best conversations are her in bed or her, like, like looking <laughs> up at her phone. And I dig that because, like, that's me in bed. Like, I'm not even making fun of that, per se. Like, that's all of us. Like, sitting there in bed going, like, do you want to get something to eat? And like, I don't know. And then Craig does that baby voice. Like, I just want, you want to have a date today, baby? I love having dates with you, baby. And it's, it's so cringe. I don't know. I don't know. I love it. I, I, I watched it at the airport this morning and I, whoever was, if anybody saw me at the airport, I was like, had a full smile on my face. Like it was like the perfect show to watch at that time. I agree. And I'm, 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 Shock. The this season is not Kyle the one causing all the drama. No, the the Kyle, dude. Oh, by the way, oh, but I think, like, I was at at BravoCon Schwartz's fortieth birthday, like Saturday night. I lost all my equipment at like Tom Sandoval's show, but then uh, Ariana was like, "Oh, well, come to Schwartz's fortieth birthday," and I was like, "I have, okay, let's." Kyle was there, and Kyle was hammered but and like and i'm not and amanda wasn't there but like kyle wasn't doing anything wrong it's just that you really see that these people like they want to keep partying like they want to keep like and he was so charming and fun I, I, but i want to make this clear he wasn't like hitting on girls he just wanted to drink with the dudes he was like yeah brother yeah like <laughs> he he's still in like they're still all in that phase of like we're going to live forever. And then it was like five in the morning and you're like, you know, like, I don't know Kyle that well, but I'm like, hey, is Amanda cool with you being out still? Like, you know, like you're, you're literally wondering, like you have to go home and like Amanda lives with you. You guys are married. He didn't do anything wrong, but he was just, you just see how much these people enjoy the nightlife still. Yeah. And I mean, BravoCon was, I, that was another one. I, I mean, talking about BravoCon, that whole weekend got me sick because I was so yeah. excited with everything that was happening around. Oh, me. it was too. It was too much. It was. It was sensory Ooh. overload. I was. I mean, that Friday, like just going. Uh, it was too much. I mean, I was just sweating my ass off because I got so nervous. I, I didn't. The first, like, there were people who recognized me from the show, and I do a podcast mainly. So I'm like, the fact that anybody recognized me at all was like, it, it really freaked me out. Like I wasn't ready for it. And I'm not like saying like, oh, like I just lit my body turned to sweat. Like I, I just, it, there's a, there's a picture of me and Sutton Strack, you guys, where I talk about on the show where my, you can just tell my hair looks like I just got out of the shower and it's just, no, it's like all sweat from my body. That is so disgusting. But that was the thing, like everywhere you turn, there was something cool to see or somebody cool to meet. And it was so joyful. I mean, I can't wait to do it again. I just got to make sure I you know, try to figure out I the pray. sweat thing. Yeah. I hide. Well, no, no, I mean, hide. I mean, keep, I don't want to keep hydrate. I'm going to not hydrate at all because I feel like that's where the sweat's coming from is from hydrating so much. And then it's trying to get out of my body. I'm going to not well, drink I mean, water for a week. If, if you're sweating, you need to hydrate while you're sweating, but you don't want to, Bain, the middle no, of no, no. I actually even read about this. You know, some some women usually do this for the Oscars. They, there's like a shot that will like stop up yeah. your sweat sweat glands. Yeah. And I was like, I need that. But then what if I look like the nutty professor because all the sweat just goes to my face. Right. And so I'm just like carrying around all of this sweat water in my face that won't come out of my pores. But like this is, this is how my mind works because – I don't know. It's just so weird. It was just, it was great. I, 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 it was great and it was too much at the same time. Yeah, I mean, BravoCon is going to be my my Burning Man of my Coachella for now on. I mean, last, oh, last, both sides. Yeah, that's well, what it is. I, yeah, well, I mean, I don't. If there's anybody that wants to give me Botox, I'm I'm not against Botox. I'm totally for it. I just don't want to pay for Botox. I don't want to like. I'm I'm conserving money. So like, if anybody wants to give, I don't even care if you're a professional Botoxer. But if you just have some Botox laying around, I'm happy to let you poke me with needles if, or anything uh please contact jen armstrong for oc she's not on the show anymore so she probably needs the extra shout outs on podcast yeah ask her ask her if she'll do it for ryan 
I, I spell my name R Y A N, not R Y N E, like her ex. Um, no, but no, I think uh, BravoCon, I cannot wait to go back next year. I hear that they might be moving it to a different city, which I think it would be a mistake. I hope yeah. they leave it in New York. But it was, I remember that, that that Sunday, I was going on two hours of sleep, and I thought, I was like, oh, I might die here. Like, and then at the same time, I was like, you know what? It's okay if I do die here. Like, I mean, like, this would be a fitting, like, oh, he died doing what he loved, sweating around Bravo, <laughs> sweating around Bravo liberties. Like, the guy truly was like, maybe this is the way I go out. And then I was like, next year, then they would have to do a tribute to me because I was the only one that died at BravoCon. Hey, I mean, that would be... <laughs> By the way, it's good to see you get scared at it. You're like, ah, it's, it's very scary, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hey, Ryan, I just want to say thank you so much for this conversation. I... This went so fast, but but tell everybody, I mean, I, I know this, is, but this goes up on YouTube afterwards, too, right? Yeah, he goes to okay. YouTube, he goes to Twitter. So everybody, you guys know that he's coming on my show too. So we're going to have a part two of this conversation and I'm going to be able to delve into a little bit more of uh, what he means when he says, I want you inside me and things like that. And all of the housewives and all of the stuff. Cause I want to know how you got started. So you, anybody that sees this in the next week or so, come on over to my show for part two of this conversation. And I look forward to that very much. And thanks for postponing this a little bit today. I really appreciate it. I didn't really count on things happening the way they did. So I, I, I appreciate you even coming on. I mean, honestly, I, this is by far like one of the, the funniest, you know, conversations I've ever had in my life. Oh, um, stop. Give it. Okay. Stop. Stop. You don't have to. No, no, no. Yeah, it is, well, it is, you got to have more conversation. Well, we're, we're going to have part two of that conversation next and week. I'm so forward to it. Uh, but anybody, yeah, go. Thank you for subscribing here and please go over and check out so bad. It's good with Ryan Bailey. If you haven't already, we have a podcast. We have a YouTube channel now, actually, where we put the, in, the guest interviews on there, but mainly it's the podcast and the Instagram page. So go over, check that out. It's way too much content. I know, but just pick and choose with what you want to hear. We did an interview with crystal this week. We had the reality gaze and it was about 90 day fiance and love is blind. And it was so fun. And then if you really want to support, we have a Patreon where a couple bucks a month gets you access to now like 250 episodes that have never been on the main feed, plus live Patreon Q&As, all that stuff. So there's way too much happening, but please come be part of the So Bad It's Good Army, and we're going to talk with Eddie next week, so come back for that. Thank you so much. Mike. I feel like such a douche every time I have to do a commercial for myself, so, I'm gonna, so I, hate I hate it. I hate it so much. For. <laughs> uh, but thank you, dude. I appreciate this. Good, Ryan. So I'll talk to you next week and uh, stay safe and, uh, you know, good energy to you, you know. Okay. Text me. Uh, to, and also, I guess we're still on, but text me yeah. all the links I can, so I can post this weekend to remind people that it's out there. Will do. Thank you so much, okay. Ryan. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay, guys, you saw it. That was one of the best, best conversation. I mean, I love this man so much. I mean, he's one of my inspiration and in why I do what I do. Uh, so I appreciate him coming on. So just go ahead, go subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. You can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok as Martini with Eddie. And next week we'll have more guests, more fun, and more housewife chit chat and Bravo TV uh, conversation. So have a great weekend, everybody. Bye, besties.